right, let's say you're dealing with a binomial distribution. Remember that by means two, so only two outcomes. Um, typically, a probability of a success or a failure, certainly on a test, true or false. And so it would be a distribution that only has, you have repeated trials, but only with two outcomes. So this is the formula that if you want to know the probability that you get three successes. The formula, as you can see, looks pretty complicated. Um, the n, the total number of trials, the number of ways the event can occur. This exclamation means factorial, which says start at that number, whatever n is, so let's say it's 5, and multiply it all the way down to 1, so 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then x is the number of successes, p the probability of success raised to the number of successes, q the probability of failure raised to the number of failures. So you can certainly manually go through this, but it's, you know, it's a little tedious um, to actually do this by hand. So of course, Excel has set up a way to do this. So let's say that we have um, five light bulbs. And we want to know the probability that three of them actually um, worked. So either they worked or they did not work. And so our probability of success would be three light bulbs. We know from in the past that 85% or 0.85 is the probability the bulb is going to work. So the probability that it's not going to work, which is Q, equals one minus the probability that it worked. And I'm going to click and reference the cell in case I want to change that probability. And so, of course, I get 0.15. So now I'm going to come down here and find what is the probability that I would actually get three successes. So in Excel, you know to start, you want to start a formula with an equal sign. They, of course, have the binomial distribution as you start to type it. You can see many different ones. Um, either use this first one if you have the newer Excel, or if you have the older Excel, it's ju there's just not a dot there. I'm going to type dot D-I-S-T. Open a parentheses. Now, you know from the summary statistics video, if you watched it, that your data always goes in the parentheses. Now, I tend to, you know, all of these different formulas can't remember what order to put things in. So nicely, Excel tells you the number of successes. Well, that would be my three. So I click on it, comma, my number of trials. So that would be my total, my N, comma, my probability of a success, which would be that. And the cumulative, you have to be careful with this because if I say true, then that's actually going to give me the probability of zero or one or two or three. I don't want that. I, I only want exactly the probability of three. So I'm gonna double click here on this false that says only give me exactly three. If I wanted three or below, so in other words, this would be a less than or equal to three, then I would put true. So I close my parentheses, I press enter, and that gives me my, um, with my binomial distribution based on these values, the probability that I would get three successes with, let's say again, my light bulbs is 0 0.138 or about 13.8%. Now, in binomial probability distributions, you can find the mean, the variance, the standard deviation. It shows here how to find them. They're fairly simple formulas, so you don't have to use Excel for these. You could use a calculator because Excel doesn't have actually the built-in. You just manually type equals n times p. I press enter, so that gives me my, on average, about about four light bulbs. Uh, my variance, which is n times p times one minus p, which is q. 
And then my standard deviation, probably the easiest thing to do is just take the square root of my variance. So equals SQR, oops, RT. So Excel even has a built-in square root formula. Click on that cell, close my parentheses, and I get all my values. Again, don't forget reusability, reusability. What if I now wanted to know the probability of just one success? I change that to a one, I press enter, and that updates. What if I knew the probability of a success was a little bit higher, like 0 0.92, everything updates. So again, remember to reference your cells and definitely learn this binomial probability formula in Excel because it makes it very quick and easy to not have to do this manually. Okay, so some students don't like to type in formulas, okay? They either just don't like to type or they like to have boxes just to enter things in. So what's nice in Excel, I don't tend to, you won't see me use this a lot, but most students tend to like it better, is you can go up here to the formulas and insert function. And let's say I want to search for binomial, if I can spell it correctly. I click go. And I can see here is this formula that I just did. I say OK. And notice here it actually gives me boxes. So if I click on these up arrows, it'll take me back to my cells. So number of successes, click the up arrow, click X, click this down arrow to come back. Number of trials, and I can just manually type, in this case would be B2. The probability of success would be B3. And in this case, cumulative, I do not want it to be cumulative. So notice down here in the box, it says for cumulative, use true. Um, otherwise use false, so I am going to type false. And I click OK, and it gives me the same thing it did in the previous video. Some students just tend to like this insert function a little better um, to be able to go through and search for their actual functions.